Hello again, greetings, WordPressers. Jackson here. Welcome to the channel. Nice to have you. As always, so about a year ago, maybe 10 or 11 months ago, I shared with you my very personal, my very own starter block theme that I use for all my WordPress block theming projects. If you haven't seen that video, link is in the description. Please go and check that out first to get you up to speed with the whys and the wherefores and the hows and the, all the ifs and buts. Today, I'm launching version two of that blank block starter theme, and the link to download that is in the description. It's a freebie. It's on the freebies page of my website, and the version one is by far and away the most downloaded file on my freebies page. Anyway, version two is not a huge, it's not a huge update. It's been refined, a little tweaked to incorporate all the stuff I've learned over the last year and, and pulls together all the knowledge that I've kind of done bundled together with the various different projects I've been working on, all the block theming stuff I've learned over the last year. Anyway, welcome to version two. Go ahead and download it. Link is in the description. Let's get stuck into it. Right, blank block version two, blank block starter theme version two looks pretty much exactly the same. And let me tell you, it is exactly the same. But like I said, please go and watch this video up there so you get the whole backstory and why and what and why fours and the, all that stuff anyway go watch that if you haven't done it already version two let's take you through some of the updates we'll jump over to our admin there's our block theme installed it's activated let's go to our vs code and here's our theme files all pretty much the same let's start off with our style dot css not too much. I've tidied this up a little bit. I've re removed some of the more opinionated stuff and there's other tweaks that overcome some of those stuff. In the last year or so, it's it's been quite a wonderful learning curve to actually get deep into what I think is required and using the default stuff and tweaking the workarounds to accommodate that in a more simpl simplified way, if you like. Anyway, uh, we've got the navigation breakpoint thing in there again, which is where you can set your own breakpoint for where your menu turns into mobile menu. Very nice. A couple of extra nice little bits. We can wrap our headlines to make them look a bit balanced. If you don't know about that, I'll make a video if you like. Some other CSS for particular default blocks, core blocks that you can't change in the full site editor. And we've got CSS for that. A few odds and sods. Sorted out some button stuff. So hover states of the buttons because that is not built into core. Why, oh why, is it not built into core? Anyway, so buttons are all sorted. Um, next up, let's have a look at theme.json. Again, very similar. I've changed the names of the colors and put them in slightly better order. And this is so that you can or we can allow for slightly easier approaches to creating styles and palettes in the editor as well, or within the theme files. More about that in another video upcoming. Remove duo tone. It's not, I've never used it. Don't know why I've put it in my theme in the first place. Spacing. And we've now got um, fluid spacing, which should have been in there to begin with. It was, it was always available, which means the spacing that we have on paddings and margins, stuff like that, is responsive. It is intrinsic. Let me show you what I mean. Let's get back to our front end and go to our typography page. This is a custom page, by the way. Although I might drop this in as a pattern because it's kind of useful. If we just open up our inspector, this is what we're, we're dealing with here. This element here, let's go over to the back end and go to our pages and open that typography page up. If we go down to our group here, let's get our list view open. You'll see that we've got that padding large top and bottom, left and right. And if we inspect that and go to computed, and let's have a look at this here, look at the, the padding here. If we go to responsive view on Firefox and we make the screen a little smaller, keep an eye on here, look, see, it's intrinsically becoming smaller and smaller and smaller until such times as it can't get any smaller because that's what the theme.json has set large here so the lowest it can go to is 2 rem which is coming in at 32 px it just means that you can with a bit of luck <laughs> a lot of luck not have to worry about custom css to change 
paddings and margins at different screen widths because that's not built into WordPress, although apparently it's coming 6.9. Come on, 6.9. Anyway, it's not there now, but this will help alleviate that and hold tight for a little the little bonus that's coming in at the end of this review about how I am now sorting out responsiveness. It's absolutely epic. Hold tight for that. Right, what else have we got? So yeah, I've tidied up the buttons a little bit. I've got I've got that hover state going, so it allows you to then jump into your style css and you can change some of your hover states here so going back to theme.json i've essentially just removed a few more of the opinionated stuff i'd put in to the version one as i've begun to be able to work with core to then customize your stuff so that it's not baked into the actual theme itself added a few extra bits of styling for the some def default core blocks just so that you've, there's a better starting point rather than just being sort of kind of blank and that's kind of it for theme.json. So let's jump into the functions.php file, which is pretty much the same. You will notice immediately that there is a new enqueued CSS file here. In, up in the assets, we've now got this blank CSS, core f.css. Core f stands for core framework. Now, if you don't know about core framework, it is this guy here. And I've been using this for the last... I don't know, four months or something to actually take over a lot of the responsive heavy lifting because, of course, we know that responsive is, apart from the intrinsic side of things, isn't built into WordPress core. But there is a time when you do need extra CSS to shrink stuff down or make stuff bigger at different screen widths, and we can't do that yet. Come on, 6.9, 6.9. It's not in 6.8. So I've been using core framework. So Basically, if you don't know what core framework is, it's a CSS framework. And essentially, you can create sets of CSS classes and then just have them in your theme. But anyway, this is not about core framework. There's a tutorial coming up very soon about this amazing plugin and how you can use it for theme development and responsive block theming. Anyway, slight diversion. Okay, so we've got, again, we've got the enqueue the scripts for the... Um, is there for the front and the back end. Right, next up in functions, if you remember that on our, get back to our typography page, remember our third button here? Well, that is actually a style. So what I thought I'd do is give you some examples of block styles and, and other various things within the starter template so you can then take them on and do with them what you will. One of the biggest things that I've found when building out sites over the last couple of years is that with buttons, 100%, there's never only going to be two types of button. So let's get back to the back end and look at our buttons here. So here our button is the fill button. This button is the outline button. And this button here is our blue button because we've created this, this little block style here that says throw in a new style, call it blue and give it this CSS. But I thought, well, why not include it in, in the starter theme so that you can then take on your projects knowing that you, you can just jump in and something like buttons is one zillion percent always required. Okay, the second st uh, block style I've included is for quite a weird one this. If we go back to our page and our, on our group for our spacing here, if we just duplicate that, you see we automatically get some space between them. Let's save that and inspect that, refresh that and inspect. Now you see, look, this has got this thing called margin block start. Now margin block start start is can actually be set at theme level. A lot of the stuff I was fighting with a year, a year and a half ago was all this like, oh, it's quite useful because if you put an element in, then it's always going to give it a bit of space. And it's very, very crucial when you're allowing people to, well, not allowing people, when your users are creating blog posts and things like that. And I didn't like it at first, but I, I kind of got kind of got used to it. But the issue here is that if this was a, a situation where I didn't just didn't want to have that there, then I want to remove that top padding because all that is is basically margin top. Margin block start is margin top. So with this, let's go on to our second one, this one. With this block style, we can go margin top zero and it just squidges it together. And I, honestly, it's a, it's a lifesaver. Because you, otherwise you'd have to group these two together and then group them again and put no spacing in there, which is a bit, it's, it's laborious and it's, it's, it's annoying. 
Right, what else have we got in the functions? Last one, example of a block style for the gallery. Now, I'm not going to show you this one, but essentially this is, it sets the aspect ratio of the grid because unbelievably, even though on images you can set the aspect ratio, on a gallery you can't set the aspect ratio. It's so annoying. And this, this basically makes it square, which essentially saves you having to write that, that little bit of CSS. I've done a video about that as well somewhere. I can't remember where. So next one is very important. If you are building themes, now you will recall that if we take a, uh, you know, a, an element and we say create a pattern. Now all these categories here, some of these are built into WordPress and some of them are actually built into themes. And this is what, uh, where this bit of code comes into play because believe it or not, page isn't a default WordPress pattern category. Neither is hero. You know, probably, you know, my view, very useful. So this is how you add those to your theme so that you can add them. But now, but why this is important, I should probably do a little quick bit about this, is that if you then start exporting your theme for production or selling or whatever, if you chose, okay, well, I'll just make up a new cat, that is stored in the database and that does an export with your pattern. And there's, lot, there's tons more coming on patterns. So you've got to remember to build category patterns into your theme, not just throw them in the database. More of that, way more of that coming. And look, I've just put in my very old, my very old, uh, old favorite short code example so that you've got the current year to stick in your footer so you don't have to remember to update it every year anyway that is a starter block theme version two fill your boots download your free version of version two of my block starter theme link is of course in the description and if you want to know how to use that here's a video for you a block theming masterclass but until next time i shall see you later